I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. We're doing a series on gender-affirming surgeries, and today we're going to look at the basics of breast augmentation. Breasts, of course, come in all shapes and sizes, and everybody has their own opinion on what shape and size is best. And like everything else in gender, there's no right or wrong, only what's best for you. So most people will experience breast enlargement when they take hormones. So when we give somebody estradiol, this is going to promote breast growth. And as you know, this is going to start with what's called a breast bud. So it's a little bean shaped fullness or thickness that occurs right under the areola. And then little by little, the fullness begins to expand as more glandular tissue develops around the areola. So progesterone can enhance the breast growth for some people. I've seen some variation in this, but that's worth considering. And most expected breast growth will, we'll see within the first three years. And I think that for most women, a B cup is about where people will land. I have certainly seen some enormous variation in this, but I would just expect, and we have kind of a joke that if you are wanting to be the size of Dolly Parton, you want to get your relationship with your breast surgeon early in the game. Now, just how much breast development you get can be genetic. And so they always say, choose your right parents. If you want big breasts, you might do better with big breasted female relatives. Remember that broad shoulders can offset breast appearance. So if you have broader shoulders, that may actually make your breasts look smaller. So when you're looking for an implant size, for example, you might want to look at something slightly larger. You can enhance your breast size and appearance by non-surgical means. And we've covered this in previous videos, but just to review, so you can make an appointment at a department store like Nordstrom or Macy's and get an appointment with somebody who is an expert in bra fitting. This will be privately done by appointment and it's really a pretty good experience to have. And it certainly will get you into the most enhancing bra that you can wear. Many women use chicken cutlets or takeouts as temporary breast implants or really breast forms. And you could buy these online. So at the top left of the slide, you see what people will term chicken cutlets. They're very flexible um, breast molds that you can tuck into the bra. Below that is a picture of actual chicken cutlets. And I just want to emphasize that people don't actually use chicken in their, in their bra. To the right, you can see a picture of knitted knockers. These are our knitted by women to use by other women who are replacing, um, at least temporarily, a breast form after they've had a mastectomy for breast cancer. Breast implants are typically made of either saline or silicone, and the silicone implants can be called gummy bears. The saline implants are filled with a liquid normal saline. If these implants should rupture, they can deflate, and you can actually see that. A silicone implant, however, is made of a cohesive silicone gel, and if it should be ruptured for some reason, it will not deflate. Um, the volume of the, the implant is measured in cc's or cubic centimeters. I, I would want to say that there are differences in how saline and silicone implants feel. And this is largely a personal preference from one individual to another. When deciding on an implant size, you will have an implant consultation with your surgeon. So during that consultation, you will have the opportunity to try on different bras of various sizes with implant sizers tucked into the cups of the bra. And what you want to do is wear contoured revealing clothing when you go for this so that you can really see the differences that the different breast size will make in your own personal contours. Don't go in your gym clothes and your, your sweat top, okay? I mean, this is something that you want to be able to see your own body contours. Take a friend with you who's going to tell you the truth, and preferably somebody who can look at this process from a non-sexual perspective. 
Remember that when you're choosing breast size, that bigger is not always better. And that's why women have breast reduction surgeries. Bigger breasts are heavier. They can hurt your neck or your back or your shoulders. You can see the woman in the, in the picture at the right is using a supportive bra to kind of counterbalance the weight of her breasts. Large breasts can get in the way for certain athletic activities. And if breasts are too large, they can really imply messages about your sexuality or your availability that you may really not want to convey. Here's a picture of two ways that breast implants can be placed. You've heard of over or under the muscle. Well, look closely at this picture. You can see that on the left, you can see that the, the implant is made right below the glandular tissue, but it doesn't interrupt the pectoralis muscle. On the right, you can see that there is a muscle underneath and over the implant. The glandular tissue is still right at the front, of course. But this is something that's, a, again, an individual preference, sometimes a surgeon preference. But be certain to find out what your surgeon recommends for this, because sometimes if your breast tissue is smaller, um, an over-the-muscle implant may give you a less preferable result. On the left, you can see an x-ray and you can see what an implant or implants look like with an x-ray. You can see them, but you can see through them on the x-ray. And on the CT scan, you can see that the implants are sitting on top of the chest wall here at the right. I think that's very interesting. Implants can be inserted through various locations. They can be placed under the armpit through what's called the axillary approach. They can be placed under the lower crease of the breast in an inframammary incision. Some people will make a small incision under the areola itself. This is called a periareolar incision. And there's even a procedure where they don't cut into the breast tissue or around the breast at all. And this is called the tuba or the trans-umbilical breast augmentation. And what happens is that the there's an opening made in the umbilicus in the belly button, and then the implants are fed up through the chest and into the position of the breast. And I believe that they can only use saline implants for this type of procedure. Remember that surgeon preferences for approach will vary according to what they've used, according to what their patients have liked, and according to the feedback that they've received. Again, I would want to restate that breast size and shape is something that's a very individual thing with respect to individual preference. There isn't a right or a wrong way to have this done, but there may be a right or a wrong way for you. Get the information that you need, consult with a surgeon or maybe several surgeons, talk to your friends who've had these procedures before, and remember that if you did have something that you didn't like, you could revise this type of surgery. I hope that this information has been helpful to you. Um, if so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.